Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about classification of joints. Joint, what is a joint? Joint is a site of union of two or more skeletal elements like bone. There are three major types of joint, synovial joint, fibrous joint, cartilaginous joint. Synovial joint has a synovial cavity synovial fluid and it has movement. Fibrous joint, cartilaginous joint may have primary and secondary type of cartilaginous joint. Joints get blood supply from the artery that crosses over a joint. Joint get nerve supply from the nerve that innervates muscle that moves the joint according to the Hilton's law. Joint has movement mostly in the synovial joint. Fibrous joint, cartilaginous joint has less minimum movement. Less or minimum movement. Okay. Now types of synovial joint we have hinge, pivot joint, condylar joint, saddle joint, ball and socket joint bicondylar joint hinge joint uniaxial movement flexion extension and typical example is elbow joint maybe also the interphalangeal joint another example pivot joint uniaxial movement occur in one axis side to side rotation around a longitudinal axis that axis is maintained by the dense or odontoid process of the second cervical vertebrae example atlantoaxial joint joint between the atlas the first cervical vertebrae and axis the second cervical vertebrae condylar ellipsoid joint this biaxial movement flexion extension adduction abduction or abduction and limited circumduction example wrist joint Settle joint again biaxial movement flexion extension adduction abduction and limited circumduction example carpo metacarpal joint so condylar joint or ellipsoid joint example wrist joint settle joint example carpo metacarpal joint ball and socket joint multiaxial movement flexion extension adduction abduction and plenty of circumduction and rotation. Example, hip joint, shoulder joint. Hip joint and shoulder joint. Common example, we have that. So, bicondylar joint, mostly uniaxial, partly when it rotate, very limited rotation, that uses another axis. Here, ball and socket joint, we got plenty of circumduction, flexion, extension, adduction, abduction. By condylar, we have flexion, extension, limited rotation, no circumduction. Circumduction, plenty of circumduction in the shoulder. If you look at the first bowler in the cricket game, they, they move the shoulder joint by circumduction. Okay. So, it is a total movement and they are very good in that movement okay so shoulder joint hip joint bicondylar example is the knee joint we have very limited rotation mostly flexion extension cerebral joint example we'll go there condylar joint this is the wrist joint condylar joint here then we have the plain type of synovial joint here between the radius and ulna gliding radio ulnar joint we have another plain type of synovial joint is the acromioclavicular joint acromioclavicular joint is a plain type of synovial joint here there is the this is the humero ulnar joint or elbow joint is an example of the hinge type of synovial joint this is hinge this is condylar this is plane okay here ball this is socket this is the hip joint 
This is an example of ball and socket joint. We have also shoulder joint, another typical example. Here is the here is the saddle joint between the metacarpal and the trapezium. This is the carpal bone, and this is the joint. This is the saddle type of sandwich joint. Look like the seat over the horse. Pivot joint here, the atlantoaxial joint. This is the atlas and this is the odontoid process or dense of the axis or second cervical vertebra. Okay, we got the examples of synovial joint. Now we'll go to the features of synovial joint. We should have an articular cavity or synovial cavity and the articulating part of the bone is covered by hyaline articular cartilage. We have synovial membrane with the fibrous capsule, fibrous membrane outside that. Inside the joint, we may get fat pad. Fat pad is essential for buffering or also protecting the bony, bony part from damage or erosion. We may get articular disc. In the shoulder joint, we'll get glenoidal labrum. In the hip joint, we'll get acetabular acetabular labrum. We may get some intercapsular tendon in the joint, in the supposing shoulder joint, and that is covered by the synovial sheet. That is intra intracapsular but extra synovial. It is outside the synovial membrane but within the capsule, fibrous capsule, this tendon will come to strengthen the joint like that of the shoulder joint. Okay, we got the we got the features of synovial joint. Okay. Now we we'll go to the fibrous joint. Fibrous joint, three types, sutures, gomphosis, syndosmosis. Sutures occur in the skull where skull bones are articulated by sutural ligaments. Gomphosis are joints between the roots of the teeth and the alveolar bony sockets of maxilla or mandible and the root of the teeth and the bone is fastened by periodontal ligament. Then syndesmosis are the joints between two adjacent bones connected by ligaments or by intraosseous membrane. Syndesmosis between, between the vertebral lamina connected by ligamentum flavor. Radius and ulna are connected by intraosseous membrane. Okay, we got that. Now, these are the examples of fibrous joint. Here is the suture between the skull bones. This is the capsule and we have the unifying layer here. This is the capsule here and we have the middle part. We have the, the these are all are the layers of the sutural ligament. This all. Okay. This is a capsule plus middle part. Okay. And the cambial part. They all are part of the situal ligament. They unite the suppose frontal bone with parietal bone, two parietal bone, or parietal bone with the axial bone. Here, syndesmosis. This is sacroiliac joint. What is the syndesmosis? Here, we have the interosseous membrane between the sacrum and the, and the sacrum in one side and the hip bone on other side okay the ilium of the hip bone on the other side this is the interosseous ligament making syndesmosis but we will be cautious in the hip in the sacroiliac joint we have also partly it is synovial, this part synovial, synovial cavity. Okay, then eventually it will be fibrous totally. And movement will be decreased as the age advances. This is the fibrous joint between radius ulna connected by the interosseous membrane. This is the fibrous joint between the root of the teeth and the alveolar socket of the either mandible or, or maxilla. And here we get the periodontal ligament. This is very important. Periodontal ligament is here. Here another 
special type of fibrous joint. It is called skin dialysis between ridge and group. Okay. We have the group here. This is the ridge here. This is the vomer that is present in the nasal septum. A part of the spinal bone goes to here. Okay. In this group and forms a joint. It is called skin dialysis. Okay. This is from Gray's Anatomy 41st edition. Okay, we got that fibrous joint. Okay, both fibrous and cartilaginous joint are called solid joint. Here is the sutural ligament. Here is the periodontal ligament. Joint between the root of the teeth and and the alveolar process, alveolar socket of the maxillary mandible. Here is the interosseous membrane, syndesmosis. Intervertebral disc. Here, secondary cartilaginous joint. This is the joint between the head and body of the of the long bone and that may be the humerus or cartilage plate will disappear and bone will be grow it will be united both will we may get an epiphyseal line in the adult person okay here is the solid joint again the synovial joint here having cavity synovial membrane capsule here is the fibrous joint or solid joint connected by the connective tissue. Suppose this is one bone, another bone, this is the connected by the connective tissue that we see between the radius and ulna, like this. Okay. So we got the intervertebral disc, secondary cartilaginous joint. It will remain in our body, it will not disappear. Maybe a little bit change at the age advances, but this is cartilage of the growth plate and it will disappear in the adult. Okay. Cartilaginous joint, solid joint, synchondrosis, primary cartilaginous joint between the epiphysis and diaphysis in the developing long bone. The developing long bone with the cartilage growth plate in between them. The joint allows growth of the long of the bone and completely ossified eventually. So this is mostly seen in the in the developing long bone symphysis secondary cartilaginous joint between two bones of the in the midline of the body usually in the midline interconnected by fibrocartilage plate example symphysis pubis between two bodies of the two pubic bones okay so the the joint between the two pubic bone together come in the sympathesis pubis, okay. Intervertebral disc between the adjacent vertebra, vertebral bodies certainly, okay. We got that. Now, here is the example of fibrous joint synchondrosis. This is the, this is the cartilage plate here, the growth plate here, okay. Then eventually adult will be we get the epiphyseal line. This cartilage will disappear. In this is primary cartilaginous joint found in the long bone. Typically, this is the symphysis, always or mostly present in the midline. Okay, we we'll get the intervertebral disc. This is fibrocartilage in between them structurally. So it is in the midline, connecting to big bone. This one body of the vertebra, another body of the vertebra. In between them, we have the intervertebral disc okay intervertebral disc containing annulus fibrosus nucleus pulposus okay eventually nucleus pulposus may be shrink as the age advances okay and that's all about the classification of joint if you have any question please feel free to ask me please share the information with your friends Please support my channel. Please subscribe me. Have a nice and wonderful day. Bye now.